Hey guys, we're going to talk about the commutative property of multiplication. I know, it sounds thrilling. The commutative property of multiplication. We're going to answer the question, how can you use the commutative property of multiplication to find products? What are products again? They're the answer to a multiplication problem. So we're going to use the commutative property to find products in multiplication problems. Are you excited? All right, let's get to it. All right, the commutative property of multiplication states that when you change the order of the factors in a problem, the product stays the same. It's just like the addition commutative property of the property of Oh, please, the commutative property of multiplication is just like the commutative property of addition. So, let's write out this problem. How can you describe this array? Well, let's look. This array has two rows, one, two rows, and it has four in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we can write a problem for this array. We can write that it is two rows of, remember that's our symbol, 4. How many does that equal? That's 8. Two rows of 4. But you can also write it another way. You can look at this array and you can say, oh well that's 4 in each row and 2 rows. So we can say it's also 4 times 2. Does that change how many circles I have in my array? No, I still have 8. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8, and 4 times 2 is equal to 8. That's just an example of the commutative property. Let's look at some more examples. Alright guys, now I'm going to sing you this song that's going to help you remember the commutative property. So let's look at the words. Ready? Turn it around, hey, turn it around. So left is up and right side is down. The total there will never change. The rows and columns will rearrange. Three times five, five times three. The same amount as you can see. To count by fives is easy, though. To count by threes is kind of slow. Turn it around, hey, turn it around. The left side is up and right side is down. The total there will never change. But rows and columns will rearrange. So that song totally shows you in my cool Miss Swinson is an awesome rapper kind of way that you can take these and just turn them around. So look, 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 5, but you just turn it around. So the rows and columns just rearrange, but they don't change. So here we have three rows, one, two, three rows, and over here we have three columns, one, two, three. But like the song says, to count by fives is easy, but to count by threes is kind of slow. Because if I want to sit over here and I want to count by threes, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. All right. Well, let's go over here. Five, ten, fifteen. Just think about it. Which way is easier for you to count? By threes or by fives? Whatever's easiest for you. But you can turn it around. That's the commutative property. The factors here if they change them here, the amount doesn't change. The product does not change. Got it? Let's look at some more. So now that we're done with that fun little bit, let's look at facts that show the commutative property. When we look at them, we know that facts that have you that show the commutative property have the same factors, but just in a different order. So let's look at these two problems. Three times four and four times three they equal 12. They both have the same product of 12. So let's look at them and let's just draw a model. So let's look at 3 times 4. We're going to draw a model for 3 times 4. That's three groups of 4 in each group. So 1, 2, 3, 4 in that group, 1, 2, 3, 4 in this group, and 1, 2, 3, 4 in this group. Do I have 3 times four, three groups of four, one, two, three groups, and four in each group, four, eight, twelve. Yep, I have that there. So let's come over here. Four times three equals twelve. Three times four equals twelve over here. Four times three equals twelve over here. So that's four groups of three in each group. One, two, 
three. Notice I'm not putting the same number in each group for this model. The first model had four in each group, and this one has three. All right, so let's count this one. Do we have four groups? One, two, three, four. Yep, and do we have three in each group? One, two, three, six, nine, and 12. So look guys, this means that three times four is equal or has the same value as four times three. That is the commutative property. Factors just in a different order and they give the same product. So let's finish up and just restate what we've learned today. We know that one, when I, you know one multiplication fact, you can use that commutative property to do what? To turn it around. Turn it around. And if you can turn it around, you can find, find the product of the related fact. Remember our little song, sing it to yourself, but know that if you know one multiplication fact, you can turn it around, switch the factors, and you'll still get the same product. And that's our lesson for today.